Hello and welcome to another edition of SOFO Presents, Nature in Our Neighborhood. I'm Melanie Mead and today's program is about trees as habitats, places where plants and animals live together. We all know that trees are important to the environment because they absorb carbon dioxide and produce oxygen, something that all living things need. But trees have a much bigger role in ecosystems than just producing oxygen. They are also an important habitat for many forest organisms. The forests we have here on the east end of the South Fork are composed of hickory and oak, like this old oak tree. This mighty oak tree was growing in the forest. One day, there was a storm and lightning struck the tall oak. The protective bark layer on the tree was broken by the lightning and left the heartwood exposed. The natural processes of decomposition and decay begin here and the tree starts to die. The break in the bark allowed boring insects to chew their way into the tree and soften the wood. As time passes, the tree becomes host to colonies of mushrooms like this honey fungus. Mushrooms growing on trees are the reproductive organs of the microscopic fungi living inside the wood. As the tree slowly decays, many animals use it as a resource for food and shelter. This red-bellied woodpecker is looking for insect grubs and uses its strong bill to hammer holes in the tree's bark. The next year, a mother raccoon might decide to enlarge the cavity the woodpecker started and raise her young kits. A den in an old tree cavity keeps the young raccoon safe from bad weather and predators like eagles and owls. As the years pass, weathering may create a space large enough for a barn owl to make its own nest. At black oak trees like these, have even larger spaces that form near the tree's base. Chipmunks search for insects and hide piles of tree nuts, like acorn or hickory nuts, inside for winter. Bats, like these little brown bats, roost together in a tree hollow by day, flying out at night to hunt insects. Many of the several species of bats that live here on Long Island like to eat mosquitoes. One bat can eat between 600 to 1,000 mosquitoes in an hour. As more time passes, the tree dies and starts to lean to one side. No new leaves grow in spring and water no longer flows upward to the leaves from the roots. These standing snags, as they are called, are common in old growth forests and in natural woodlands but they may be cut down and removed in maintained woods, resulting in a loss of suitable habitat for large forest mammals like this opossum. Opossums are marsupials with an abdominal pouch like kangaroos for carrying and nursing their young. Opossums look fierce, but are really shy nocturnal animals. In the summer, Migrating birds, like this great crested flycatcher, find insects high in the treetops. They will even nest in abandoned woodpecker nests. Carpenter ants also do not feed on the wood, but chew into the soft wood to make tunnels and chambers where they lay their eggs. Higher up, at the end of a very long branch, Almost hidden by the leaves, we might spot a bee's nest, like this paper wasps. Paper wasps feed on nectar and on other insects and are helpful in pollinating forest plants. Many years later, when the great oak has finally fallen down to the ground and is much more decayed into an old rotting log, it is still useful as food and shelter. This is an essential part of the habitat of the eastern tiger salamander. It's an endangered species in our area. Salamanders might share their quarters with a ring-necked snake or with other creepy crawlies like slugs and snails, centipedes, and earthworms. The cycle of life is complete when the old oak tree has finally deteriorated until nothing is left. The tree's nutrients are then available to be used again by other forest plants and even by a new oak sapling sprouting from a fallen acorn. 
I hope you enjoyed today's program. Look for more episodes of Nature in Our Neighborhood on LTV and look for more programs about nature on the South Fork on the SOFO website. Thank you.